Hello, I'm Gary Hibner, and welcome to Studio One 102. In this course, I'll be getting in deeper with the application and show you how you can use its more advanced features and functions for your songs, particularly multi-track sessions with numerous amounts of tracks and plugins. In going through this course, you'll get a better grip of the application and be able to polish up your songs and mixes better. The focus will be on engineering and producing your track. More technical and advanced steps will be covered. When working with songs with multiple audio, instruments and MIDI files, it can get a bit daunting. I'll show you some tips and techniques on how to streamline your workflow. Through this, you'll also get a better understanding of what Studio One is capable of when it comes to producing your songs. First, when working with big songs, make sure your audio device is set up correctly. Even though you'll be getting into the producing phase, there'll be times where you quickly want to add in and record something. Having your audio device set up correctly is a good precaution, just so you don't run into any technical issues and then forget your idea. Trust me, this happens too often. So let's check the audio setup. For this, go to Studio One, Preferences, and Audio Setup. Make sure the correct audio device is selected. I'm using the Inbox 2 Pro audio device. When you get to the mixing and producing stage, you can beef up the block size. 124 samples is a good block size to use. You can always reduce or increase it at any stage by coming back here. So let's say when recording some extra vocals, don't forget to reduce the block size so you have less latency. This area here at the bottom gives you a good indication of the latency. So at 124 samples, you'll see the latency is quite high. And when you drop it down, you'll see this decreases the latency. But let's keep it at 124 samples for now. So this is your general audio setup. But for each song, you'll have its own song setup. This will show you the inputs and outputs set up for the song. For the inputs, you can name them accordingly. These are just called input 1 and input 2, but I'll go in and rename these through the course of the tutorial. You can simply just double click this and rename it. Let's say you want to name it to the mic you're using. Let's say the mic is a SM57. Rename it to that. And you have your condenser mic on input 2. Now rename that to condenser. This just allows you to easily see the difference between the inputs when you select them. But I'll leave these as their standard names of input 1 and input 2 for now. And you can go in and add more inputs when needed. They can be mono or stereo. This is the same for the outputs. You can go in and add more outputs if needed. On my setup, I have the main output going to analog 1 and 2. I've set a headphone outputs going to 3 and 4. And I have an extra set of studio monitors, which is going to analog 5 and 6. This can be used if you want to compare your mixing between different monitors. This will obviously be different depending on your audio device and its setup, but I'll leave this up to you. What's important is that you can go in and rename these to what makes sense to you. And inadvertently, this helps streamline your working process. Once you're happy with your setup, move on to the next tutorial, where I'll show you how to work with multiple audio tracks.